any of you have uh, great burning questions to ask, uh, and luckily Pervez can step around so that we can have a bit of an interactive Q&A. Um, so, um, so you have suffered me a lot already, just a little bit more. <laughs> Um, so if are there any questions or, or comments that I would like to be made? So we have one over here. Yes? Hi. Uh, thank you so much for, uh, for, for taking me through that experience. Um, I'm curious if there have been or if you think there will be any repercussions from the film um, as you do. Uh, well, I'm getting a lot of hate mail, and the film has just been public for a few months. So there are repercussions, uh, but I hope that eventually more and more Muslims are going to see the film and understand that the film is not some screed against Islam, that what it's really talking about is what's wrong with Saudi Islam. So I hope that that happens at some point. I haven't reached that tipping point yet. It's still very new. Yes, ma'am. Um, but could you have a fatwa put on you? Is that possible? Uh, a fatwa is just a religious opinion. So, well, like with, with Salman Rushdie. Right. I, I don't know. I mean, no. That hasn't happened. No, it hasn't. No. I think it'll be fine. <laughs> Does that worry you? No, I'm okay. Not. I'm okay to be we're in a safe space here. Yeah. You clapped. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, and so this may be somewhat of a provocative question, uh, and it was it was a lot of courage that you you shared going through this very um, personal journey. So, in what way do you feel the collective are slaughtering the LGBT for their beliefs the way you slaughtered the goat? Um, I put my head down. It was actually too much for me to sort of want to carry that particular image. But I experience here in America that sometimes in, in very rigorous religious settings, the LGBT are slaughtered. They are outcast and they are <coughs> banished. So can you speak a little bit to that? Um, it's not provocative at all. You're absolutely right. And uh, um, I think for gay people, the last battles are going to be on the front lines of religion. And we haven't won those battles. We're still trying to fight them. And that's a very important thread in the film. And I think it carries itself to a logical conclusion at the point where the protagonist, I'll talk the protagonist of the film says that it's no longer a question of whether I will accept Islam. It's a question of, sorry, it's not a question of whether Islam will accept me. It's a question of whether I, as a gay Muslim, will accept Islam. So, so making a statement like that, I hope, is positive reinforcement to, to gay audiences, especially gay Muslim ones, that are going to see this film. Um, j just to be sure my, my meaning was clear, so I feel that um, there's there's somewhat of a very extreme sort of cloud hovering over. I mean, you, you have the threat of death if you're discovered. Um, so in what way do, do you feel like slaughtering a goat changed that? I, I feel that you you're still have that cloud over your head, that someone can still get you in a certain position if you're in the wrong area and kill you. So in what way is this, this killing justified? Of the animal? Or, or, you know, in real life? Um, ritual animal sacrifice is very much part of Islam, but also other religions. And all I'm doing at that point in the film is ful fulfilling a ritual that was really personally important to fulfill. I mean, the film goes at some length to talk about that. Um, it's not something I enjoyed doing at all. Um, it was, in fact, very awful. And even though I had grown up watching this ritual, other people doing it, it was just doing it with their own hands is, um, cannot describe it in words. Uh, so it was very tough. And I hope I don't have to do it again. Yeah. 
You, you mentioned that you said that the Hajj made you a better Muslim, like in, in what way? Uh, the question was, did the Hajj make you a better Muslim in what way? Yeah, I, I was wondering, because you didn't elaborate. I thought the whole film was about that. I know, but I mean, <laughs> it, it, uh, I understand that you, you didn't feel as if you were Muslim enough. I got that part. Of it. Right. But you were in a way like a sinner in Mecca, but so was everybody else. Yes. Right? Which is so why it's in, a sinner in Mecca. In what way, as like just, just a Muslim person, did it make you, so is, do you make a split between those things? Or was this just for you to see if you got accepted? Well, it's very important for me, for my mother. I mean, that's very obvious in the film. So there are deeply personal reasons. Coming to closure with grief um, and, and talking about it <coughs> in a place like that is really important. Uh, becoming a better Muslim uh, definitely happened to me because I was able to take away from the whole experience that it was no longer the dogma that would control my thoughts or my relationship with God. I would do it directly. Um, and that makes me a better Muslim because technically that's how Muslims are supposed to be in a direct conversation with God with no intermediaries. But the problem is that there are lots of people who speak on behalf of Islam today. Yeah. I got the sense that while you were in Mecca, you were actually not happy with the experience. And, and when you returned back to India, it took a different significance, which is sort of her point, I believe. Am I right about that? Uh, I was, there are difficult points in the film and during the Hajj when I was absolutely not happy to be there and I try <laughs> as much as possible to be completely honest about them. That first night at the Kaaba when I hung this thing around my neck with a rubber band and just went into that mass was probably the most violent night of my entire life. But my relationship to the Kaaba and to Mecca changed over the period of time I was there. And I think that that's obvious in the film. And India, of course, is India's closure and for so many things. And going back home, I, I think, yes, there's a special significance to that and tried to capture that. Let, let's just remember that it's, it's very hard, um, I'm learning, but for a filmmaker to turn the camera upon themselves and then <coughs> to not have a thick enough skin and feel vulnerable all the time. So these are hard things. I'm still learning to deal with it. <laughs>